All right, folks, you listen to the Shadow Channel Podcast. My name is Lewis, and today, once again, Mike is on the show. <laughs> and he's sneezing. I love that. You haven't sneezed the entire time I've been here, but we start the fucking show, and like 15, 20 seconds in, you start sneezing. Ross is here this time. We tried to... Uh, we tried to have you on a couple of days ago when Mike was on yeah, and you used like a unidirectional shit. lapel mic that for one thing caused an echo in everyone else's audio and for another thing the thing we said thing too many times the thing we recorded was apparently very libelous I've actually taken that seriously now because <laughs> two times in seven days someone said Lewis that thing you released or that thing in your case that you're going to release is incredibly libelous like, yeah. I was at the gym with Darren the other day and he's like oh yeah I really enjoyed the uh the session you did with like uh, Laurie or something and then he was like that other video though and I'm like what video he's like you did a video where you were just it was incredibly libelous and I'm like I've heard that word man but what does it actually mean <laughs> it means <laughs> you get butt fucked he's yeah, like, yeah. He's like man, man you can't, you like, can't come out with an open accusation yeah. about someone like that because you gotta then prove it have some fight I mean you know. if I was to st- sit here and make the accusation that Darren is a flaming homo yeah. then that would be a valid one yeah, but if I was to say that, I don't know. Let's see, the Queen is actually a lizard. Yeah, or a fucking. Well, yeah, random I, mean, see, I see what you're saying, but it's the nuance that confuses me. I suppose it's the that's nuance, like because not, wouldn't that's that be libelous. like everything David Icke's ever libelous. said would be libelous? Yeah, that's though. not libelous. Yeah. That's like total fucking conspiracy theory type stuff. Or lizard but, Illuminati. Yeah, like lizard Illuminati. Is it only like libel people, if it has a negative connotation then? Yeah, or, yeah, it's libelous if it has yeah. like negative, or if, if it's if an it, unrealistic. Like it does it have to be damaged, determined to be unrealistic. So the queen, if, he could say the queen's a bitch and she's a lizard. It's like is she a bitch because she's a lizard? Or what? If it's damaging to your um, <laughs> pu- your image, if it's damaging to your like personal image lizard. or your, like your public image. So if you're in the public eye and you're making like for example, 15 years ago before like Operation Utree, if you mm. had been like yeah, Rolf Harris has been fiddling with kids for like fucking decades and so is um, what's his name Jimmy Savile yeah. that would have been libelous after it's in the public eye it's not deemed as libelous right. as long as you're making the accusations or saying stuff in reference mm. to the allegations that have been made and have been proven to be right Right. so like okay. Jimmy Savile was uh-huh. a paedophile so, so if basically, I said that 15 years ago yeah, it would be libelous the particular name that was libelous that I shall not you know, voice. I won't. I won't mention. Who was it? Who, who was, who was it? Who was no, it? No, well, we can't. We can't actually. No, but like, you know, um, well, it was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That no, but he probably. He, like, that's is. the thing. Though. You tell me that in like thirty years, they're like, oh, it's the, it's a se- it's a new generation. It's like X Men First Class. It's a new generation of pedophiles at the BBC, <laughs> and then they name <laughs> yeah. you know bleep. And yeah. he turns out to have been this no, massive but he was pedophile. On channel four Does that for, mean that I no, win money? He was Channel Four for a while. Yeah. So, well, yeah. This is. We don't know. This, this is. This is. We're, what we're doing this is, is a, down. We're, yeah. We are like, walking such <laughs> so a narrow line. line. Like now, we might as well just say his fucking yeah. name now and like, then not re- yeah. not continue like, with talk this, like, like fucking lawyers, like fucking yeah. lawyers about it. But yeah, it could have been a cross-platform. Um, it could have been a cross-platform pedophile. Channel Five like, must be on it. Those fuckers are all. Oh, dodgy. well, those guys are probably like. Uh, you know, Jimmy Savile, necrophilia, sadomasochist guy, because all they ever play on Channel 5 is fucking CSI. And all <laughs> yeah, the no, endless the is, iterations the of CSI. The difference is, like, Jimmy Savile and that were, like, fiddling with kids. These people yeah. are probably killing them and then dissolving yeah. them in bathtubs because yeah. they know how to do it because they play <laughs> yeah. every fucking yeah. episode of what? CSI since yeah. 2001. And Breaking Bad. Yeah. Yeah, but what the thing is, though, uh, there is a debate to be had as to whether or not the acts of the presenters themselves behind the scenes were worse than the programming they were presenting. Oh, oh definitely you know? not. Were they? Because people say, this is so heinous. Well. It's like, man, you're watching a show called Caught on CCTV where we watch <laughs> shakies. Have you seen that fucking show, Caught on CCTV? I don't it's really like watch the CCTV I don't watch at, at Tower Blocks, like Sight Island shit, but it's all over the country. And it's just folks shagging outside folks shitting in the left <laughs> and I'm like man this is television and then it keeps going back to the centre that's in like some little building oh, in the middle like of the some city. guy sitting on a computer type thing watching all these this. motherfuckers that's no no his job people are, we're yeah. paying tax yeah. so these people these, can... these like fucked up guys he's like you. I used to be a, like this woman's like I used to be a dinner lady at a primary school but, but now, now at I this watch, job now I watch yeah. homeless guys jerk oh, off yeah. with hands. and some of the shit they say I'm like man you're getting paid to be on TV to talk about your job which is watching TV 
Yeah. This is some weird, like, circle jerk, totalitarian just, you know, crap going on, right? Brother Big society brother type, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't shit in a lift, you'll end up on Channel yeah. 5. <laughs> yeah, and they've got, like, the tannoy Challenge system, extension. and they're like, there's so many social problems around here. I was like, maybe that's because, like, the government has hired people to go over tannoy systems and go, we can see what you're doing. <laughs> you know, like, no, like stop think, shitting in no, the lift. <laughs> no, but imagine if they actually had that, and you had, like, some guy fucking a Russian hooker in an alleyway, yeah. and all of a sudden, all you can hear is, you know it can result in a 70 <laughs> <laughs> for public indecency and what? you would fucking run the, like, you know, the, the new Edinburgh audience. stuff though You'd you know the th- new yeah, Edinburgh just, city yeah, council call stuff it the voice of British conscience mm. that's what it should be well you know Nidri Street would be difficult because like where the hive is because those new fucking adverts you've seen them for litter I don't know if they're adverts yeah, not yeah, they're yeah. selling that anything filmed, that incident yeah. that was they're, they're like, in you, it's not really an advert if you're like we might take your money for shit right but does spunk <laughs> count as litter this is a big debate to be had it was like last night when you said can I remember about your friend who jerked off onto the wall of a school and told it to fuck off on the last <laughs> yeah, day? Yeah, yeah. Would that be classed as littering? I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty know. sure shitting would be. You bought, you get a fifty pound fine for pissing. I've had mm. a fifty pound fine for pissing when I was like eighteen. Yeah. Um, and it would be that. I imagine, or just public indecency. But I imagine shit's so much than pi- worse than piss. Piss will dry up, yeah. but like shit's going to stay there. Well, yeah. And human shit is so much well, worse I mean, than you dog can't shit. Piss man. in like a public park. Fucking human shit stinks. Yeah. You can't piss right. in a public park. I mean, that's illegal. And some will come. You're like, man. But dogs can. Yeah. That's the annoying thing. Yeah. If I was able to go around and shit in public and pick it up with a bag and yeah. put it in a bin, yeah. the council might as well have a rule. That's, that's just, the fucking society yeah. I dream of living. The in. council doesn't actually <laughs> care about like you like secreting various bodily fluids. They're just like nay solids. That's the rule. Nay solids, well, except I mean, for you, the solids that the council though. actually like wipes on the grass yeah, of the like park every year when they town all the time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. but you're, 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 you've a... Is that so, would you get fined for spewing? No, you're, you're not culpable you. yeah. for your drunken, drunkenness. Yeah, but if you're... Exactly, but, you're yeah. drunk as well. Vom- vomiting is an involuntary Well, I mean, this is, a, this is a serious topic in a segue, though, but, like, people say the idea of, like, oh, I'm, I'm spewing, but I'm drunk, so I'm not culpable for my actions, actions because I'm drunk. Mm. They have this big thing right now in one, some of the universities in the States, the story that came out where they wanted people to sign a written agreement before they had sex. Uh, students really to avoid statutory rape which if you don't know folks is statutory rape to my knowledge is not like the kind of someone's holding someone else down and it's like forceful violent coercive rape it's basically right. like oh I decided that maybe I didn't give consent two years ago mm-hmm. which is such an ambiguous I think that's line. a really heinous thing to accuse yeah. someone of especially if it's a spite as well I think the act of rape in itself is fucking disgusting yeah, mm-hmm. however I think the the act of accusing someone of it wrongfully out of spite or yeah. you know dislike for the person or you've it's your ex-girlfriend mm. and she accuses you of that like a year later yeah. <clears throat> um, that is, that's equally as bad as the act in mm. my opinion I mean fair and I'll, it's a tricky fucking fuck, situation I'm probably going to get like hate mail from feminists and shit yeah. for that but I think that's equally as bad because mm. it's not it's like it's, a form of sort of like emotional psychological yeah. blackmail massive well, and, and they'll treat they'll it's, treat you like you have to be inhibited like, against that's, it that's defamatory as yeah. well if that person was to go out and say yeah by the way yeah. like, yes uh, character well, assassination social did that a cut, like last mm. year then that's character assassination it's defamatory yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean at the same time it's difficult because in order to say okay we're going to bring in tougher sentences for people or tougher punishments for people who accuse people of raping them other people mm-hmm. who are found to be not correct so that's too difficult to but do but at the same time the police are like we want more people who are victims of sexual uh, <laughs> violence or sexual coercive force to come forward so they're caught in this t- catch 22 because they can't clear up the mud the water if the water, water gets too muddy with accusations they can't get rid of the mud because they want more people to come forward but even you know? that is too difficult to is, is too difficult to impose when you consider that you know um, rape is an incredibly difficult crime to yes to, to invest much yeah, of the evidence actually yeah. this country is an exception in America they have the restraint of appeals which means this Jimmy Savile stuff uh, I'm glad it is happening I suppose with regards to the BBC yeah. Oh, yeah, but definitely. in America you can't go okay I was raped 20 years ago you can't do it it's it's you can't you can't really? bring up but you can't bring up something if it's murder it's not like no it's I not think the same. I think that's wrong in a but way, with something like if rape if you say I was raped twenty years no, ago no because if you've been sexually you know, if you if you're a child and you've been sexually abused as a child mm. and as a child you're not going to go nine yeah, nine times it. out of a hundred that child isn't either going to understand it and it's all based on fear so yeah, they're not yeah. going to go to their parents and a lot of the times if you looked at the people who have shame. been who were abused mm. by Rolf Harris all these celebrities over here. Um, they didn't do it one out of shame and two when they did go forward and say it people Mm. fucking laughed at them and said there's no way Jim will fix it 
has sexually yeah. abused you. Well, and I mean, it, at the same time, twenty years yeah. down the line, when these people are adults, and at the same time, a lot of people thought he was creepy at the at the time. Oh yeah, and and, and <laughs> apparently this was like an inside thing where people were saying. But I mean, the idea of uh, of uh, a lack of restraint of appeals for something like statutory rape is very creepy. You go twenty years ago, I didn't get raped. Twenty years ago, I got raped because I didn't give consent. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that's where it becomes this I think really, that's a really blurry line, issue. and it's really yeah, ambiguous. because it's like you know, because there have been like five hundred accusations. I'm not kidding. I suppose in the length of Harris and uh, Savile's careers 100% feasible yeah obviously you're in the public eye it's getting to the point where there's been hundreds and hundreds of these fucking cases and you're like okay guys this is like the religions thing where you go okay either one of you is correct or none of you are correct it's not the same necessarily with that but it does get to the point where you're like a good deal of these must be I'm not saying a majority but a good deal of them seem a little iffy to me you know but also um you don't mind if he smokes in here? That's cool. Um, but also, I mean, it's it's that thing where uh, our society will say we need to do, and in the case of America, we need to do more about things like statutory rape. And you're like, okay, as a guy, and I think I said you, this to you the other day, Kelly, um, at the pub, I was like, <coughs> as a guy, I don't not rape people because it's illegal. That's what. That's yeah, not like why that, I don't like that rape gym, people. It's like a Ricky Gervais, I think it's in like yeah. politics or something, he's talking about where they have an advert years ago and it was like a woman walking along the street at night and then a mm. car pulls up and it's like the guy leans out the window and is like alright love and then like the caption in the advert was like basically like rape is wrong or something mm. like that yeah. and it's like his take on it was quite well it was, it was comedy obviously but it was like serious in a way and he was like what kind of society needs to release adverts to tell people not to rape tell people not to and then he's like yeah. sitting there where he's like the son's in the house putting his balaclava on and he's like <laughs> right mom, I'm away out raping yeah, and she's yeah. like wait no you can't do that. Yeah. It's like you, it shouldn't be something you even should be something you should educate on people, but it should be something educate people on from a young age. But mm. it shouldn't be uh, it shouldn't be something that is taken exactly. I mean, to, to most people, you it know should be I mean? innate. Like, like it, it violates yeah, the non aggression principle. It's coercion. It's, it's violence. It's, it's using inher- people as objects in the moment. Yeah, there's so many things wrong. A man or even women, like fucking men, get sexually abused by women. Uh, men get abused by women. Violently abused by women. Um, it's, it does work both 100%. ways. Men get violently and sexually abused by women. men more yeah. often than men yeah. abuse women. Like there's more male victims of rape than female victims in the West, uh, and I don't even know if it's the case in Africa. But I mean, uh, you know, in places that are more unstable politically, you know, you have various factions and fucking militias running around. Um, but I, I mean, we could change topic here. I mean, that's an interesting one. But you know, to, uh, to, I'll to, let to you finish it, that. Yeah, yeah, cool. point. And does anybody remember like a few years ago when they released that advert about that girl that was going out in like a short skirt? And, yeah. And it was about and it was about rape and it was essentially like think before you go out wearing yeah. a short skirt type thing. Exactly. Like, like, as, as, as in exactly. Just by, as in just like victim by dressing blaming. a yeah. certain way, you're victim inviting rape. Yeah, you're exactly saying you're rapists. saying it's That's your fault. That's a horrible it's your Fair fault, enough, yeah. there's appreciating seeing a girl in hot pants, but it doesn't mean you need to drag her into an alleyway and fucking tear them off her. Do you yeah, know what I mean? I mean, like, but that, also, like went, yeah, 100% to, I agree if, with you. If, yeah. if I went to a club and assless chaps, yeah. I wouldn't... Be, not just inviting a good rod yeah, at the arse. Yeah, yeah, it's, not, it's fucking, not like I'd be going, like, thinking, oh, man, I shouldn't have wore those assless chaps when I got absolutely yeah. bukkake at the yeah. end of the night. <laughs> yeah, you well, know what I mean? That's also inherent within that is this idea... Disclaimer, like, this is... I have never worn or never will wear assless chaps. <laughs> yeah, again. Unless there's um, money in it. Yeah, no, unless like, inherent, though, you, well, you, yeah. often see, you often see radical feminists walking around with these banners that say, don't tell me what to wear, teach your sons not to rape, Right? And inherent within that, in addition to the fact that yes, okay, if you say okay, don't you know if you say if you're saying to people don't wear a shirt that's too short, you're victim blaming, and plus that should never be the dynamic where we say as a result we need to cover up more because that's I mean that's what the fucking Islamic countries did a thousand years like, ago, and they're now incredibly sexually repressed and screwed up. That, like, but at the same time, it implies that guys, uh, you know, if you do the wrong kinds of things in the wrong combination, guys are just unable to control themselves. It's, yeah, it's fucking, fucking ridiculous. Brutal. That's and fucking yeah. and it's I've sexist never, and I've, intolerant. Like uh, when you're steaming drunk walking around a nightclub you're guaranteed to be looking about and you're thinking yeah, fucking hell look at that fucking hell look at her that, that look don't at tolerate short, anybody who asks you to apologise for your own sexuality and your own biology but you're not going around dropping fucking rufle in into their, no, into no, their drinks no, because yeah. you're a fucking normal psychologically stable human being and you're mm-hmm. not a fucking rapist yeah. it's like a total it's a fucking weird subject there's like nothing and it's like, like there's two whatever. sides of it as well yeah. there's, all, there's two sides of it where it's like blame a, blame people who are wearing shit that is too Lewd, I suppose yeah. you could say, and then you're saying, "Well, blame men for doing the raping," but it's like you can't. 
you can blame you can blame the people who are doing the raping. Yeah, you can't blame the people who are being yeah, raped. I mean, blame, yeah, yeah, you can't blame vi- you can't Some blame of the victims. Edges. But that but that's this whole thing yeah. about not wearing certain shit is blaming mm. victims. It's fucking. Some important. of the rougher edges yeah. in our society. I've never been able to decide whether or not it should be matched up in one way or the other, or it should be equalized. But it seems to me that male sexuality is amplified and female sexuality is still quite repressed. So what you're left with is this crazy dynamic. And if you add monogamy as a social norm into that shit. mix then you you're you the result is a lot of fucking hassle and drama like mm. yeah, dan that, savage the that guy that started the gets better thing has come out against monogamy lock and analogy and it's like who gives a fucking shit man yeah. I mean, i'm not against monogamy i think that some people are monogamous i don't think i never really had uh, the impulse no to sex be. before marriage uh well yeah there's that that's way extreme in the opposite direction oh, no, on it? another like, interesting topic a uh, fucking priest yeah. not being able to marry I think mm. that's probably the worst well, you idea you deny people yeah, sex you create one very the, unhealthy people yeah you're creating people that are going to be sitting thinking about that shit every day and thinking but I can't think about that yeah. oh but I'm thinking about it oh does that mean I'm going to hell oh oh yeah. I'm going to hell so I need to say fucking 300 Hail Marys because mm. I've seen a girl's nipple slip yeah. out of her top exactly so like, Mike, Mike if you ran the Catholic Church what would you do to alleviate the child sex abuse problem it's a bit <laughs> heavier Hard question, ball question. There. What, what was the name of the Roman Emperor that went around uh, the halls in the Vatican chopping oh, off with a I chisel don't, no, it, wasn't, it wasn't a Roman Emperor it was a Pope who felt that pope? the times during a... the 1300s had become too lewd because like the Popes <laughs> yeah. in the 1300s were like wild men like you've seen the fucking Bourgeois or the Borgias yeah the Borgias yeah the Borgias for I mean Italian culture has always oh, no, been quite fiery and passionate. No, the Borgias are not an accurate representation of people who are being too For about a hundred pat- years, a no, lot of the popes for, were playboys yeah, and, yeah, and they womanizers. Were, yeah, they're yeah. not an, a good representation no, of people not. who were too um, paranoid about sexual but, um, behavior amongst priests because the fucking pope was shagging everything left, right and centre yeah. in Rome, as were his sons. Mm. The, the weirdest thing that I find about celibacy in, in, in any church is that, you know, these people are supposed to be are supposed to be a source of guidance for anybody so mm. you couldn't necessarily go to your priest or whatever to relate and say oh I'm having marriage troubles yeah you know what well, he was like well you know I've never touched a woman so I can't exactly. really compliment exactly you can't give someone life boys. advice <laughs> yeah you can't give someone life advice if you're thumbing have a softie into an empty uh, shampoo bottle uh, of a night have you, know, you seen you can't, the film you can't give life uh, advice you've if you're thumbing a softie into the end of an empty redox ball it can't happen have you seen the film Don John no uh, it's like basically there's like loads of scenes where he goes to church every Sunday and he like uh, I watched it a couple of weeks back with Wilson and Dale wait and is this the fantastic. porn movie yeah it's a fantastic right. film honestly I didn't I hadn't seen it and it's actually really good and right. uh, it's funny because you're sitting there and you're thinking this is my fucking life yeah in a movie really I mean <laughs> I, I get really the feeling that it's a sort of unctuous uh, injection but, of social liberalism which I find a but little but basically he goes, to, he goes to church every Sunday and says like yeah I masturbated 15 times eh, no it's right, like yeah. some of them is like this mm. week I masturbated 37 times well blah, I mean blah, blah. there and you the have priest, a priest that's fucking yeah, ruining it for the rest yeah, of the us the priest's you know? answer to it is uh, say 24 Hail Marys but it's like the guy's telling him the fact that he's got a problem with jerking off therefore he's not enjoying fucking his girlfriend and the priest is saying, yeah, say, 10 Hail Marys. Right. If the guy was able to sort of, like, empathise with him and say, shit, yeah, I'd jerk off as well, mm. and it's getting to be quite a problem, yeah. uh, then he could maybe say, yeah, here's a card, go talk to a fucking therapist mm. yeah. that you're jerking off 40 times a yeah, week. Exactly. That's like four times But a at the day, same time, if he does that, he decentralises dependency on the church. All, all the answers and all the guidance have to come from the church. It's like a slick marketing you know, oh, it's protocol. fantastic. It's like you can't, no, it's you like, can't it's pull like it away from the in, church because all guidance needs to come from the church. You give it to the, the Middle Ages, and it's mm. like, yeah, give us your. If you've not been to church for a couple of weeks, give us your gold, yeah. and then that means you can go to heaven. So all yeah. of a sudden, you have these motherfuckers giving mm. them everything. Selling that indulgences, they yeah. yeah. Reduce. It wasn't actually re- heaven. Well, it was reducing your time in purgatory. Yeah, it's why the Reformation basically happened. Which is kind of like limbo for adults. Yeah, somewhere down the line, someone must have said, "Why am I giving this motherfucker money for him to tell me that I'm going to heaven or hell when he's not being?" there mm. and doesn't know if I'm going there yeah. anyway why has this guy got any jurisdiction over what yeah. I do in life um, that's basically how the, I that's, mean, initially, that's how the reformation yeah. started guys initially the priestly <laughs> class weren't actually celibate this was something that was like enforced really? uh, because I don't know they were just they were just wild men they were only, just fucking everywhere. only Italian it's Italians a little bit like want to fuck your that. therapist you know like yeah. he, this motherfucker sitting in the leather chair slick suit professional looking office with those balls that you know just not, not his actual testicles but those little office Ornaments, you know the ones that just swing from side to side endlessly. Yeah. You know those ones. He's got that shit on the go, and you're just like, you just you can't help yourself. If you're the priest in the middle and in, in the Middle Ages, and no one can fucking read, and you can read, and you like wash and shit. You're, I mean, you're fucking, you know. I'm just gonna throw it out. You're there, slinging dick. Church, you're slinging church, dick left, right, and center. Only a church run by Italians could end up this fucked up with yeah. kiddie fiddling and. 
chronic. It's become e Italian. Incestuality. Like, yeah. Fucking hell. Well, you know, um, uh, uh, Christopher Ryan wrote a book called Sex at Dawn, which is what I got into, like, the, mono- uh, the monogamy. Yeah, I remember you telling stuff. me about this for two and, hours. And uh, he says that Italian home. guys in studies actually have bigger balls than most other people. Hmm. Like, bigger testicles. Is this what we're and there's a direct. Lo- um, there's this a, is what yeah, we're talking about. This is actually happening. There's a, there's a direct, there's a direct uh, uh, relation between the size of your testicles and the promiscuity of the females in your society. Shit, I've got, 100%. Ti- I've got tiny balls. Maybe. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, Scotland is <laughs> Scotland is like a pro- like peanut. Scotland is like, like a proddy thing. monogamy like haven, gentleman. though. I need to stop jerking off forty times a week and going to yeah. see, <laughs> going to see okay. a priest and doing forty <laughs> Hail Marys for it. Hail okay. I've sorted my life out. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about the opening ceremony for the Commonwealth Games, which is literally on tonight. Which if is anyone, the twenty fourth, twenty third. It would have been on. Twi- yeah, yeah it's twenty third. Yeah. Yeah. Why, if any yeah. country could make an opening ceremony of any form of sporting event an absolute fucking cringe fest, it would be Scotland. <laughs> yeah. The only way they could have made that worse is if they just had a giant fucking tartan dildo going into Alex Salmon's arse on the main stage. That is the only way they could have made that worse. Yeah, I'm just gonna. Yeah, and, right and, he's, right and he's just eat, for ease of entry. And he's, he's eating just, fucking he's shortbread with a yeah. bottle of Glen Fiddle. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, you're right on, man. I was gonna say shortbread flavored lube. <laughs> just <laughs> on the passage of the no, mo- massive part and dildo. It's not even lube. They've just crunched <laughs> up shortbread and rubbed it on his fucking yeah. ass. He's like, this is, a, <laughs> this is this is how we grind in Scotland. Yeah. It's it's weird with all these kind of messages from equality, especially with all the press about um, about homosexuality being a crime in what forty three of the Commonwealth countries. I think it's something. It's How many Commonwealth countries are there? Fifty something. In the Commonwealth. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, and, and homosexuality is illegal. Well, you got to bear in mind, we did we did pick up some animist, paganistic, black African slaves, move them to various islands in the Caribbean, and then just give them enforced Christianity for hundreds of years. You know, this is like, true. that is the reason they're all hardcore Christians. I think it's if valid, your kids are dying of malaria, you're probably pretty Christian. I think it's know? a valid point that you're talking about like equality for all, and then there's like people being fucking jailed for being the way they were born. Yeah. in a country. Yeah. In certain countries in the Commonwealth, and, the, and at the same time, it's funny how we sit here, like the Queen sat there, stood there, sorry, and said, like, yeah, it's a, yeah, we're re-, like, basically, it's a clusterfuck of reminiscing about yeah. the Commonwealth days. But probably about twenty to thirty-five of those countries that are at the games, we probably went in there, murdered yeah. thousands <laughs> of them, burned their homes, took everything that was yeah. of any worth in the lands that they lived in mm. and then basically put a British flag up and said yeah you're part of the Commonwealth and wow. now they're walking out into fucking Celtic Park yeah. in Glasgow but, but in Glasgow, smiling Glasgow I said it earlier Glasgow is like it's like Liverpool it's one of those cities that was just built on things like yeah, no, you know, how many mass warships, exportation how many, in the slave trade yeah, I mean, how many just, warships were built on the Clyde that went were to used, like used that used went to, to like yeah. Gabon or places like that yeah. and blew the fucking shit out yeah. of half of these people it's, it's fucking yeah. ridiculous but it, you know what? It's a sport and event. Yeah. So it's supposed to be about. Well, it's like, supposed it's to like be about this is politics. this is where we yeah, built the ships to, to like put down the Indian mutiny, mm. like to put Which down is, the sepoy mutiny. Yeah, like what I said earlier. If it was going to really be in touch and pay a real homage to the Commonwealth, then at the end of the ceremony, we should have rolled into the stadium with Vickers machine guns and yeah. mowed everyone in the stadium down, like we did in the like authentic like we did in Vickers India. machine guns yeah, like, to like yeah, bring, it back. Ones, bring it back. Authentic ones. Bring it back. None of this know. fucking GPMG type stuff. <laughs> well, we have well, nowadays. Well, with like the Vickers ones, wait, were Vickers ones first world war? Are they the ones first you see on Last Samurai, where he's actually just got no, that's a Gatling gun. Yeah, it's a Gatling gun where he's just turning it. No, Vickers Endlessly. machine guns were First World War. Yeah. Actually, I watched a program about the machine gun not that long ago, and it was uh, saying that during the First World War, mm. the Brit- the British military command didn't like the idea of the machine gun because it was all about being fucking chivalric and yeah. honourable in the field of battle and that, whereas they were rolling around in fucking mud with bodies in it. Mm. Whereas the Germans picked it up, and basically the Germans started mowing our guys down, and then all of a sudden we went, fuck, we're losing because yeah. of the machine gun. We well, know the French. That's the only reason the we French. Was, it even, um, was it even the machine gun? I thought it was just the spring reload um, out that was in the guns, and that they had the spring that just popped the bullet out, and then you could put one in. No, I think just, that. Oh, no, you mean you mean a breech a breech loading rifle? Right, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you pull it out like, like the Enfield rifle. The yeah, Enfield yeah, yeah. rifle was voted the no, second greatest rifle no, of all think, time no, after the AK forty seven. Do you mean like the M one Garand thing that the Americans used to have that you could get? Yeah, college, it would go bang, 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 bang. Then there'd be a little ping the at the end. Ping out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no, like yeah. back then we were using like bolt action rifles. Yeah, yeah. They were they were cartridge guns, so they'd have you'd have like a cartridge of like eight bullets. I think eight bullets was the standard for the M one. Aye, eight yeah. for the M1 and then, for the M1. For the and then the last the bullet would fire out the fire out like a pin and so you'd be able to hear it uh, but actually people don't talk about this often but the Germans actually caught on to that quite quickly during the Second World War so whenever they heard that 
they knew they that knew, the, yeah. the Americans were out of yeah. bullets, yeah. like or whoever they were fighting. <clears> but also, I mean, like the French at the first part of the First World War, in terms of like fuck ups. You listen to Dan Carlin's podcast, Hardcore History. He has a show out right now called uh, his third one hasn't come out yet. Uh, but it's called Blueprint for Armageddon. It's all about the First World War. It's the hundredth centenary, the yeah. beginning of the First World War. I think in early August. Um, I think the anniversary art shoot Franz Ferdinand's assassination. Is yeah, it wasn't really that soon. long. Like yeah, that was, two, that is it, is it just recently. happened? Yeah. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was a couple of weeks. Ago, yeah. yeah. Uh, basically, That's like the, the French went into the war. Do you know what they didn't bring? Helmets. They, they had their guys wearing like army standard berries or like whatever the French used to wear yeah. these little kind of look like shortened fez or yeah. something like that without the little uh, frilly bit. And uh, the guy was like, no, no, I mean, the war is going to be over so quickly that we're not even going to have to put helmets into mass production. Mm. Yeah, and but, but within mind, the first, like, three months, comp, you know. Like, helmets back then, even helmets now, I think, if you got, like, shot in the head, would, a bu- would the helmet stop the bullet? Oh, yeah, the, bullet? the helmet stops the bullet. Really? Depends on the would kind it? of bullet it is, but, like, a, an AK bullet, AK bullets actually are not that... See, if you were to shoot someone with an AK, you, they'd probably still die. But, I mean, in terms of... Uh, how much of a punch they pack? AP, AK bullets don't pack as yeah, nearly as much of a punch as you think. Yeah, because NATO rounds are five, five, six millimeter, spin. Then, and then um, yeah. Soviet rounds. That so the AKs were yeah. like seven, six, two. Well, but you know, I'm talking like a big motherfucking bullet from a Lee Enfield rifle. If that hit oh. you in the head with a tin hat, oh, with, a tin, with a Second like, World War yeah, tin hat, a, yeah. yeah, or a First World War hat, that would have done yeah. fuck all. Anyway. They're mostly so they designed. Might as well have been yeah. rolling around in fucking. They're berries. mostly designed to protect you from shrapnel and from. Uh, debris, yeah, yeah, debris, you know, uh, all bits of rock, but bits of cement, um, bits it, of mud. But if you're getting absolutely butt fucked by howitzers, then what is that going to do for you anyway? If you've got howitzer rounds coming down, and you because when the jump. howitzer rounds come down, they, they they churn up all the dirt and the earth around them. They fly, they throw stones everywhere. On top of the shrapnel, they actually throw organic shrapnel in the crash site, you know, in the in the area of effect. And so if you're down in a trench, your head is the most vulnerable part of your body. The French, they estimate, lost like 200,000 men over the course of the entire war between when they started and when they actually implemented these helmets for all their troops. They lost an unbelievable number of people just in injuries, which will completely uh, completely cripple a front line. Do you front know, line um, because casualties are defined as people who are either missing, injured, or dead. When they say casualties, that, that word, that, that means missing, injured, or dead. It doesn't necessarily yeah. mean just dead. Do you know an interesting, um, um, an interesting idea about um, about kind of bulletproof, uh, bulletproof technology? I suppose to, to put a word to it was in uh, tribes of South Africa that realised if they dipped their leather shield in water, um, then then the British musket bullets would just bounce off it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really? you, you look at yeah. you look at the change. I mean, for most of human history, how long have we used edged weapons? Edged weapons, either copper oh, yeah, along or iron or steel or bronze or yeah. tin in some places and you go for the whole flint, of human history flint in some yeah, places yeah. exactly you go for, for the thousands whole, yeah. of years yeah exactly flint stone before yeah. that as well you used to have motherfuckers exactly. rolling about with sticks with fucking stones tied exactly you imagine getting bludgeoned to death with that yeah. I'd take a sword to the face rather well, than yeah, that yeah what, what about a morning star like, <laughs> yeah, a, like, a, yeah. like a like a mace yeah. or something like that fucking but hell. for so much history it was blunt force weapons and edged weapons yeah. so recently have we had the widespread use of firearms even at the beginning of the 20th century, even at the late 19th century, you've seen the uh, you've seen Zulu Dawn. They're still using fucking speeds. Zulu Dawn's the shit one. Zulu Dawn's a prequel one. Yeah. Basically, Zulu is the one. It's got Michael Caine in it. That's yeah. the one that you want to watch. Yeah. Zulu Dawn's good. And it's like a total fucking jizz fest for the UK. You could tell it was made like late 60s, early 70s. Because the end of the film is basically the guy, I think if I remember correctly, is the guy loses the Union Jack and then manages to you shoot the guy. lost the king's colours, sharp. Yeah, no, ah, uh, yeah, he manages to like, there's like a Zulu running away with it and he's got like a Remington rifle which would have yeah. had like a 200 yard Three fucking, blades. yeah, uh, 200 Moisture yard packed. fucking range at the most and manages to shoot the guy on the run and the yeah. thing falls into the river and it's like this emotional fucking moment. That's I mean, a like bullshit the, the film. Lee it's, 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 not, it's not as bad as The Patriot. The Patriot is probably like one of the worst films. Oh no, I've no. The pa- I think The Patriot's a great film. No, it's a great because film. Because it's one of the few like films histo- that you will find that has line infantry battle. You don't see that a lot, man. You see it in yeah, Shark. Yeah, I know. But, but that was one of the most but, chaotic no, 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 insane no. ways no. Of, of conducting Mel, war. Mel, like Gibson, this- Mel Gibson falling down in battle and then picking up the stars to grab the American flag, wave it around so that his so that his uh, his army can rally behind him is the cheesiest and I was, dumbest I thing watched ever. Push pro- forward, I watched man! A, I watched a programme yeah. about Gettysburg not that long ago, and the American Civil War is the fucking... 
definition yeah. of insanity yeah. warfare. like mm. back then you would literally line and the reason we beat the French so fucking conclusively in most wars is because we were able to fire off four rounds from a musket in a minute yeah. the French or the Americans were able to do like two, two. say because two. of the type yeah. of rifle they had it was a brown best we used was it not yeah the, it was brown, like the browning rifle yeah. yeah so we had that and uh, and Come eighteen what American Civil War? It's like eighteen sixty one to eighteen sixty five. About yeah, four I think, years. Yeah, and um, they lost about six hundred thousand people. No, it was like over a million in total yeah. civilians and well, military no, the, casualties. The, the casualty estimates that they have start at six hundred thousand. Really? I don't know if there are other people with estimates that go over a million. I'm sure people but, in the uh, south would have different estimates well, to people yeah. in the north. You know, what I mean, mean, like, uh, but basically I mean, at Gettysburg, mm, Gettysburg, uh, were, Antietam were, as well. Um, the Battle of Antietam no, was, a, was the bloodiest is it the battle, battle of Richmond, the American. I think it was. It they were, been, yeah. Maybe the Battle of Richmond, in, which is in Virginia, so it must. Yeah, have, that was like main battle of the Civil War in the Independence War and and the and basically they were about. 50 yards away from each other mm. which is literally like you know from the back of your flat to across the street to the back of the yeah, other yeah, flat yeah. that's incredibly yeah. close and they were just firing they were just loading mm. and firing and it was like 20,000 men 30,000 yeah. men died at Gettysburg what? when they were firing just One steering the, yeah. each other could you imagine fucking lining up mm. like that well and you like, know in, in ancient warfare most of the casualties would come in the pursuit most of the casualties did not occur during the actual battle. Yeah, it happened what you'd when actually the, have when the is, line broke. Yeah. Every, well, perfect example is mm. um, uh, the Battle of Hastings. Mm. Basically, the reason um, the Normans won is because the fucking like the English, the Saxons yeah. were lined up and then they broke the line yeah. of the Normans at one point and chased down. But that many Saxons yeah. chased down after them, and it kept happening. And then eventually, uh, what was it, Duke of uh, William? Duke of Normandy whatever yeah. realised that if I just feigned a yeah, retreat a feigned route, I yeah. can draw these guys in and just yeah. annihilate them with my cavalry because the, the Saxons didn't mm, have the Mongols, a conclusive amount of cavalry the Mongols and the Sarmatians and the Parthians who this is named after were most famous for this they used to call it the Parthian shot so basically you get them a chase after you you charge right up to them pretend to be scared and then on your horse and then pretend to be panicked and scared and then run away they charge after you on their horses your horses are faster and you have bow and arrow right so what you do is you do the Parthian shot you keep panicking and then at a preordained moment everyone turns in the saddle uh, 180 degrees in the saddle uh, turns around and shoots off at point blank range and at the people who are following you mm. and this was a devastating tactic and we were talking about like edged weapons for so much of human history like edged weapons and the bow and arrow were the pinnacle of weapons technology and that changed so rapidly during the enlightenment and even right up until the late renaissance you would have clusters of like arquebus uh, shooters and arquebus, um, you know those early weapons you see that look like every time they've been fired that they've blown up like some tin foil at the end. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's, it's, it looks like it's been ripped apart. Yeah. Um, those shot, those were unbelievably inaccurate. Would rarely kill if not injure anyone, but they scared the shit out of the horses. And the main purpose for them really was just pyrotechnics to kind of weaken the enemy's morale. The real first use of gunpowder, you know, um, was in cannons for bringing down city walls. So what do you immediately see? You, t you see it go from bow and arrows, where you build a higher tower on your castle, as high as possible, and the guys with bow and arrows stand at the top and shoot down at the people that are seizing right. the castle. And then, during the uh, Renaissance and early Enlightenment ages and all that kind of stuff, the Industrial Age, you start to see what? You start to see the size of castle and fort walls go all the way down and widen. So it's like someone squished them down and they've got broader, yeah. uh, like some kind of cartoon, because they suddenly... Uh, the, 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 the height is completely ineffective now. It's been uh, made redundant because... Um, a cannon shot can go right through whereas mm. uh, an, or an oranger or a catapult isn't going to do nearly as much damage to a castle wall but a cannon will go right fucking through it very quickly Yeah, and so that's where you start to see these forts where they're very low down comparatively but they're very broad they're very thick you know and um so you see like architecture itself change to uh, you know bring itself in line with weapons technology but uh, let's talk about something else yeah, because Michael said like three words, and you've been talking about everything from fucking statutory rape to like Parthia. Well, yes. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, inclined to, to to know a lot about 18th century musket technology. Yeah, yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what would you like to talk about? Uh, just, um, I don't know. We had a, a pretty a pretty good talk about uh, about the Middle East and about uh, uh, Israel last time. That didn't. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, Kelly, do you want to go first? I don't really like to call. Like I, I, I don't. Shut up. I don't really like to talk about it. 
Well, the war. I d- yeah, no, I don't know because it's like a subject that if you say one thing, then you're going to get fucking abuse on it, and if you say yeah. the other, you, you can't. You can't yourself. fucking censor you everything you say. Yeah, this but you, this yeah, is yeah, actually another thing. Okay, how about this? Similar, but it kind of applies to us. The Snowden leaks. Uh, Bill Clinton was famous last year. He said, "I basically be careful what you." He actually said this. He said, "Be careful what you put in writing." Yeah, and I'm paraphrasing him, but this is essentially what he said. And we've got to that age where it is, you know, you've got to fact check yourself and um, and and kind of add a caveat to everything you say. And in case you offend someone, as you just said, Kelly, I mean, I, I'm applicable to this as well. It's 100% happens to me as well. Um, and these new press laws, I mean, they make that concept of libel far greater, don't they? I mean, ironically, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, it, you, you can't the, say something we're talking about libel. Have you seen the show The Newsroom? It's fucking fantastic. No. What's the name of the guy who plays Harry out of um, No idea. Out of Dumb and Dumber. The oh, um, oh, shit. Jeff. Jeff, not Goldblum. No, not <laughs> Jeff. Dunham either. Um, uh, I'm not sure. Fuck knows. Anyway, he's Jeff in Jeff Daniels. Sh- Jeff Daniels, yes. He's in the sh- a show called The Newsroom, which is a, on a like, it's like fictional news uh, station. Mm. And in the second series, they basically have a story where it's uh, the Americans were using um, chemical weapons on a mission in Afghanistan or Pakistan or something and they basically the guy made it all up the guy totally fucking right. edited loads of the shit this character within it and um, I can't remember exactly but he obviously he gets fired for it because it's like a total fucking disaster for the news station and he gets away with it he doesn't get jailed and then he tries to fucking sue the news organisation for firing him mm. even though he made a fucking total bullshit story up and it all came because of one guy that basically told them a bullshit story and you think to yourself like you could get you could think to yourself you have the story of your fucking like life whispers. yeah right. you have the story oh, yeah. I've got the story Oriental that'll make, yeah I've got the story that'll it. make me like fucking what's his name uh, David Frost yeah David, like I've got a story that'll make me the greatest journalist of all time and then you end yeah. up fucking up and it's lies and you end up with no career no money yeah. and you're fucked and you're known as a libelous yeah, piece of shit yeah it's based on like conjecture or yeah, half no, de- or yeah like exactly yeah. you're, you're always tra- you're always treading a fine line like yeah. for example when the, you, that sh- uh, the Malaysian Airlines plane was shot down last week or the week before yeah last week um, it was IFAX news agency that revealed that it had been shot down mm. by a surface to air missile and you think if they had got that wrong mm. that could have caused well I mean people were doing so it anyway people shit. are doing it right now people are doing it right now I mean when does it cease to become libelous if you're saying that the Russian Federation is responsible for bringing the aircraft down I, I mm. posted on Facebook they're not responsible yesterday. for bringing the aircraft that's what, down that's they're what responsible our... for clearly right I'm okay, sorry okay but... are, they, are they responsible if our country's putting them under sanctions to me that says that we're saying that they're responsible and I said on Facebook yesterday, I'm like, if you are going to extend that reasoning, half the countries, uh, half but the Western still powers, selling half the fucking, GA, they're still selling weapons that can take down a fucking yeah, airline. We're, we're yeah. selling weapons rebels. that can take down an airplane to them. We're selling weapons. This is the front page of the Metro today. We're selling weapons to the Russians. We haven't ceased our, uh, our arms exportations to them from like BAE systems yeah. and shit like that Obviously, highly working in the United States it, you know if we extended There's, that logic like the Israel, to other countries other than Russia most of the G8 countries would have to put themselves under sanctions it's like the Israel situation no. it's like the Israel situation where it, you can't really pass judgement on either side you can't pass judgement at the side of the separatists in the Ukraine even though well yeah you can when they shoot down a fucking airliner yeah. but you can't pass the judgement of them you know taking up arms type shit yeah. against the Ukrainian government when they feel that they're more aligned to Russian nationalist fervor yeah. uh, yeah. Russian society culture yeah. etc yeah but I mean, the, and you, know, you can't airliner is not the, yeah no I'm not saying that. Yeah, the worst yeah, thing about free speech is the ambiguity that. if they didn't if they hadn't shot down the airliner there wouldn't have been any yeah. more fucking there wouldn't have been any more or less mm-hmm. animosity towards them or sort yeah. of like Ill. the worst thing about regulating free speech is the, is the ambiguity in what you can say because people were saying oh this plane was shot down uh, and I initially just to piss people off I said has the uh, have the experts arrived at the crash site yet? No, you know exactly. you could say that you, yeah. you you that the plane's been shot down. But if you want to extend that and you say okay, it's been shot down. Let's say it was only the rebels in that region. There were no Ukrainians. The only people who could shoot it down therefore are the rebels. So if you say it's shot down, that's as good as saying the rebels shot it down. Now, yeah, it does yeah, look yeah. as though the rebels yeah, have shot it down. Pretend, that pretend it's a week ago and we don't. And I said, well, I, the, know is why I said at the pub, I was like, have the experts got region, there yet to examine the fuselage, like to examine the crash? And, and tell us whether or not a missile or some kind of explosive there wasn't was much down of a plane. fuselage left yeah. if you looked at the fucking exactly. crash site mate. exactly Jesus. and so it's where do you want to extend that to because is, is that then libelous against the Ukrainian there's, le- there's rebels no, this is yeah. the part that pisses me off because it is just like okay this let's is go ridiculous. back to Israel because that's okay. Like, okay. it's so. a similar situation where people are going oh, like Israel Israel are 
totally going full retard with this. Going in, and I think Gaza is one of the most heavily populated areas per square mile in the yeah, world. In, in the I think world, there's yeah. like two million people living in an area like the size of Manhattan Island or something mm. like that. I think it is. So they're going in there and they're bombing. The thing about it is that they say they're bombing Hamas mm. targets, but Hamas is the government there. Therefore, they could be bombing a fucking dole centre. Mm. They could be bombing... Yeah, yeah. Bomb and, that's, a post and office, Hamas is, want that. Hamas yeah, want no, that. Hamas that's want exactly that what they're going it gets, for. Because it gives, it, it gives um, world support, public support towards them, but at the same yeah. time, you know, you can't deny... like. They're using human you, shields. They're you using. Can, you can judge the Israelis because they're, they're, they're being ridiculous and they're being they're, they're becoming sort of like the embodiment Listen, of everything that they I have created. A lot of that, criticisms, yeah, I have yeah, a lot of criticisms. They are the embo- of They've become the embodiment of everything that they created that state. To, yes. to, to escape from, yeah. from which they, is persecution. I, mean, I think they should have went to fucking injustices. Madagascar myself. Yeah. I should. I think they should have went to Madagascar but instead of going back to the same time, the Holy what Land. you do need to remember is that. Fucking during Yom Kippur, they yeah. had Jordanian and Syrian tanks rolling through their streets, yeah. and you had military because it was a Jewish national holiday. I mean, Jew, yeah. like it, Orthodox Jews on like the Sabbath won't use the fucking phone, yeah, because it's viewed as being unpious. Yeah. I, I, so, people say this wait, is nationalistic. No, yeah, it's not it's racist. No, it's not, yeah, it's, I mean, they, yeah. they don't like Jewish. People. During Yom, that's their yeah, thing. During Yom Kippur, there were there were military officers having to drive around neighborhoods, knocking on doors, saying just to let you know, like we've been fucking invaded. Yeah, yeah. and they were. Attacked, I think they were attacked, attacked in 58 in the 50s they were attacked they were attacked a couple of times in the 60s and 67, then 70, 67, 60, yeah 67 but the, and then the thing is what they did is they took the Sinai over the mm. Sinai region because they said well you know what we're going to take the fucking Sinai so that if Egypt wants to invade us again they're going to have to go through there and if their tanks won't through there then we're butt fucking them from the air yeah. if their aircraft won't through there then we've got an entire well, air defence cordon set up there yeah at one point they you can't deny that they have they've been surrounded since the, the creation of that the creation of that state they've been surrounded by numerous belligerent Arab yeah. states like Jordan Syria Egypt Lebanon yeah. I think even Turkey had a but, fucking thing people say it's pick, but, but, I mean that, that's that's just speaks to the stupidity of why pick that area I know that yeah. I know that that is, is, is a much holier place for, for the Jewish culture but it's like a cultural Jesus, you, religious but, yeah. Yeah. You know. well you, you, you look at the Iraqi and Syrian Ba'ath Party the Iraqi and Syrian Ba'ath Party was founded in the 1930s and was model, modelled on on uh, Hitler's rise to power in Germany and to some extent Mussolini you take someone like Saddam Hussein who modelled himself in the same way that Hitler modelled himself on Charlie Chaplin yeah. Saddam Hussein modelled himself on Joseph Stalin which is why he has the moustache mm-hmm. massive yeah. admirer of Joseph Stalin um this was before the creation of the uh, Jewish state in 1948, right? They That was formed partially as a result of um, the resettlement of Jewish people in Palestine, right? Which at the time, you know, there wasn't all that much, not to the same extent there is today, kind of animosity. Jewish, uh, Jewish, and that was Jewish founded re- because Jewish they wanted to... rebels in Palestine were even blowing when up the Jews soldiers didn't have a state, in, in the 1940s. Even when the Jews didn't have a state in Israel, before 1948, there was already... Arab nationalist movements yeah. and a big part of what they believed was anti-Semitism yeah. not, and, yeah. and it's not like oh okay they modeled themselves on the Nazis and the anti-Semitism came bundled in with it no they used it to augment their own anti-Semitism yeah. they don't like Jewish people and so they'll say okay this is Israel-Palestine we're talking about nations here it's like no you're not man you don't like Jewish people and you can't yeah. stand the idea of Arabs being run by people who are not uh, Arabs, you can't stand the idea of the fucking kites here's running, an idea. Here's, run Arab, here's, running here's, Arabs. Here's, here's and you want to tell us that this is about nations? Here's I an idea for you: If Israel came out tomorrow and said, "Yeah, yeah we're going to create a state and we're going to call it Israel Palestine," yeah, everybody's amalgamated into it. Right? Yes, everybody, even the Gaza Strip, the West Bank, it's all amalgamated. Yeah. We have equal rights because mm. the problem is that in Israel, Palestinian, like they went into Pal- are dirt they, yeah, in they yeah. went into Palestinian areas burned all their shit knocked their homes down and then built Jewish settlements well, on them yeah. but if they created an Israel-Palestine state where everyone was equal everybody got a vote mm. everyone had the same shit yeah. would, 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 would that there work? Would Here, here's the thing there would still be conflict you, exactly you know Arab, Arab Israelis Arab Israelis who are Muslims if you look at uh, Muslims who live outside of the western secular countries for mm-hmm. the most part like our country and most of Europe uh, most of Europe not former Yugoslavia necessarily but um, Australia places like that look at those people who live, who are Israeli Arabs, who are Muslims. Those people, with the exception of countries like ours, are the freest Muslims in the world. In the world. If you want to be a Muslim in the Middle East and you want as much freedom as possible, there's no better place to live than in Israel, right? Mm, yeah. I mean, and they want, that's a false comparison as well because, I mean, you get two Israeli teenagers. I love how the, the media and the news and the newspapers have like a 48 hour memory. 
It never. It's insane. Yeah. It, it's selective it memory. It's, no, it's, it's a selective memory. Selective. Two Israeli it, it, teenagers it, 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 it are captured. To de- it appeals to the demographic to which they're, yeah. they're trying to appeal to. Yeah. You know what I mean? People aren't going to like. It sounds really horrible, but if it had been three Palestinian teenagers kidnapped, like after it, there was a Palestinian yeah. uh, yes. kid kidnapped, and yeah. they burned him alive. Yeah. Did you hear even a fucking third, a quarter, one fifth? One tenth of the fucking amount of coverage that the free Israeli oh, yeah, guys well, got. Yeah, I, I no, agree, we're, but, but we're, we're a lot yeah. better at that in the UK. Than yeah, in the UK. Yeah, yeah and no, in the, the UK, UK we're fucking tenfold better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. For example, you're from Aberdeen. If yeah. you were, I guarantee, you, if there were people in Norway launching rockets that were landing in Aberdeen, yeah. I don't think you would give much of a fuck about what your military was doing. To count 160 that in rockets Norway. in one night. Well, no, you see that. You see that. But the, you remember there was that huge story about um, Iraqi prisoners being yeah. tortured by American Abu Ghraib. Yeah. British, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I think I think that there is much more of a. I mean the Jews are. Uh, I mean the about, Jews who live. Exactly yeah. what, what what is what is an act of mm. war? I accept know? that not all Zionists are Jews and not all Jews are Zionists. Mm-hmm. But the but the uh, the Zionists who live in Israel. Um, the Zionists who live in Israel are some of them are fucking nuts. I mean, you've seen that Louis Theroux episode where he goes to the settlements. I, I watched like, at least for that. Yeah, these, I, these, I these people, these incredible. people genuinely. I mean, they are they are religious fundamentalists. I've never denied that, and I despise uh, the idea that God is a fucking estate agent who gives people yeah. land. But at the end of the day, I mean, yeah. uh, and I hate to use that phrase. At the end of the day, but. Okay, they, they, they abduct and murder two like Israeli footballer. teenagers, right? At the end of the three. fucking day. Uh, like, three Israeli teenagers, yeah. right? And then, of course, you've got this pers- uh, Palestinian I don't kid. I, I they don't abduct and murder him. And then, of course, there's a response because these nutbags in, in, in the West Bank, these crazy settlers, get a hold of a Palestinian kid and then do essentially the same to him, I'm not gonna worse. Be, I'm not gonna be then you get a hundred, that's here, the response, 160 rockets in one night fired towards civilian areas. And if you look at the... the, the yeah, but boss, how many fucking... There was, there's been over 300 airstrikes on the Gaza Strip yeah, already. There's been like 500 people 100%, but you can always say that, though, because Israel can always be found to be guilty of excessive force because Israel has a massive military. So put it this way, right? Uh, when the Israelis aim... No one is sitting in Tel Aviv saying... Get the aircraft to make sure that there's civilians in there that we can kill. But how? No how one's do you saying know, that no, in Tel Aviv. I don't, I don't know. No one's saying that in Tel Aviv. That? How right. do you know that? It's no. based on fear. Netanyahu is not sitting there going, "We need you to really kill as many innocent a, civilians you really as possible." Really, he gives a fuck about Arabs? because no, no. every time he kills them, he's well aware that their kids will fucking hate him and his country. They don't give. They, he when when give Hamas aim their top, don't give a fuck. When Hamas aim their rockets, they're aiming for Israeli civilians. That's the difference. Yeah, but what? How do you know that they're not aiming for civilians? Israel is not. It's one of the most targeting densely civilians. populated fucking areas yeah. in the world, and they're you bombing not, it. Uh, you, can't you can't not kill not civilians. Do it. Exactly. So why yeah. do it? Why? Because they're fucking firing airstrikes. fucking 160 rockets at them no. in one night. Send ground troops in. No, if you're going to do it and try and prevent yeah. collateral damage, send yeah. ground troops. But then in. they why would be condemned. Yeah, I agree with you, man. But then they would be condemned by the international community for reoccupying the Gaza Strip, which they should never have lifted the occupation. I really off don't in the think first they place. give a shit about the response of the international community, considering they've been knocking down well, fucking I mean, homes. They and just villages announced for yesterday that there's now. a there's an embargo that's been put on all Israeli airports by some countries including this the one the FAA and yeah. they're not flying there yeah. uh, and really that's so it's like goes back to the Ukraine situation with back that, to with that flight. it's understandable with that flight being shot down why the fuck were they flying over the eastern Ukraine yeah. when there's a civil war going on yeah. if I was on a plane I wouldn't want to be going anywhere near there I'd be flying because even if like a handheld rocket launcher isn't going to be able like a stinger missile thing, yeah. isn't going to be able to reach an aircraft at 33,000 I think it had been Ryanair but, people would just I, have accepted it but I wouldn't <laughs> have I wouldn't even risk that even shit charges. you know the chances I mean, you take when you, when you fly with Ryanair <laughs> You might get shot down by separatists. You'd have been charged Ryanair. for it. You'd have been charged for it if you were on yeah. Ryanair. Oh yeah, man, they would have charged you for the fucking like gunpowder. This is know? a captain's <laughs> announcement. We have an SU-11 missile inbound. That'll be an extra fourteen pound charge <laughs> per customer. Yeah. But um, see, with the Americans behind them, if there were, if there were, uh, if there were an Israeli occupation of the Gaza Strip, I don't, mm. I don't think anybody'd say a fucking word. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, like separatist missile inbound. The, make sure, main, it, make I, sure the only only take car payments. I only take car main, payments. I think the main difference here is that back in the eighties and the seventies, during the Cold War, you had the Russians arming the Arabs, yeah, and you had the Americans arming because it was a proxy war. Well, yeah. It's like it's like if, for example, the now, Russians arming the Iranians. You mean no, there's uh, the Russians arming 
the Arabs back in the fucking 70s and 80s yeah. during Yom Kippur etc right yeah, were, yeah 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 I see what you're saying right, I think yeah, if it was yeah. the same situation now where like China were arming the Arab yeah if that's going to start was, happening yeah. as China if uh, that China's was, ascendancy if, if that was happening now I think yeah. people would be like oh well it's a proxy where we don't want to get involved yeah. but because it's like you've got a superpower arming Israel mm. everybody kicks off and it's like a yeah. massive injustice at the end of the day people are fucking butchering each other over yeah. a what a two thousand year old book? Yeah, five thousand. Oh yeah, year old it's, it's crazy. I saw what you were Can saying you earlier. That? If you've got like, a homemade rocket it. and you fire one hundred and sixty of them, the, the other guys that have a Tomahawk cruise missile can always be found guilty of using excessive force because you don't have a Tomahawk cruise yeah. missile. You don't have F fourteen fucking fighter jets in the hundreds. You don't have it's all like this sophisticated Rourke's shit. Drift. It's like Broke Strip. Yeah, they had fucking they had Remington rifles. Yeah, and the Zulus had spears. Yeah, it's like one side in the ascendancy technologically mm-hmm. this is um this is this is when this is when the you know the division of church and state becomes the the most important issue when the church is the state the elected head of that state is not really the man in charge he perceives the man in charge you know he perceives his motives and his actions to come from the man in the sky yeah you know so so incredibly so, dangerous <laughs> exactly so if you could if you're a leader of one of these countries and then you immediately bring god into the equation it gives some type of credence to what you're <coughs> doing um, even if it is massacring civilians, you know? So the, that's a, the, the entire that's situation is ridiculous. It sounds in completely preposterous, but if you think about it, just build a fucking wall around the entire region. Let them go at it for 200 years, and then at the end of it, there's only going to be two groups left. Mm. It's either going to be the group that are so Work fucking... China. Yeah, it's either going mm. to be the, the group that's so crazy they fucking won the war, or yeah. the group that eventually thought, why the fuck are we blowing each yeah. other up over a 2,000-year-old well, phase? I, I thought about this stuff for ages, and for... I mean, I'm still a supporter of Palestinian rights I mean for the people who yeah, are Palestinians no, you can't deny who that. live they within need, Israel they need acknowledgement from the international is, yeah, community that's the thing exactly. everybody worldwide is going poor mm, Palestine but, it's a false, but their elected yeah. representatives are going mm. to the fucking UN and denying that nation the right yeah. of being a state it's ridiculous if you give a shit write to your MP yeah. tell them to fucking fight for your cause in parliament mm-hmm. it doesn't matter if you're yeah. in the UK it doesn't matter if you're in fucking Holland or anywhere tell your elected representative that you want them mm. To fight for their case. Well, I take the Bill Maher. Nobody outlook. does. That. You know, Bill Maher. He said, uh, yeah. "Like, I'll, I'll, I'll paraphrase what pa- uh, paraphrase what he said, but I've kind of taken it uh, as maybe part of my mantle is like kind of uh, or my outlook politically. I want more people to sue each other and not kill each other. That's what he said. He said, in uh, civilized countries, we don't kill each other, we sue each other. Mm. You want as many lawsuits in the future as possible. It's always better if people resolve their disputes where one of them gets screwed over financially than if one of them pulls out a machine gun and is like, yeah, but this is going to be for, the time decades, where we take it's back the blah, blah, blah. Now the Americans have been trying to set them down and every single yeah, fucking time it's went to shit. What they need to do, what, what, they, what the Americans what the need Americans to do is, under- the, is, is, is it's a false equivalency if you say, or not a false equivalency, but it's a false balance. People say, well, there's the Israelis and then there's their counterbalance, the Palestinians. It's like, no. People say, okay, well, well uh, who's gonna who's gonna kind of win out in this peace process? Like, who's gonna win out? The Israelis have won. What I think the Israelis really, won thirty what forty I years really ago. What Israel needs to do is 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 uh, retake the Gaza Strip, occupy it, annex it, annex the West Bank, annex the Golan Heights. Tell the Syrians they're never getting any of those territories back in the north. The tell the Palestinians have no position to fucking count tell your that Palestinians. Moment. Tell tell the Palestinians the, the idea of Palestine is over. Take the entire thing. They can do what they like no, with the Sinai. I think why it'd be better if they took the Sinai and then declare Israel Palestine. No, but why say, do, no, why, this is why, now going to be a secular state over? for both Israelis why and take Palestinians. It over? Why not offer them? Just say to them, why don't we become Israel Palestine? Why don't we become the state, yeah. the nation of Israel Palestine? Do you want to be that? If you want to be that, then you have to completely fucking denounce Hamas and you need to accept Israeli Palestinian citizenship. Yeah. That seems like. Well, you know, I think, I mean, I agree with you. And, and, and I, I, I want an Israel kind of Palestine as well, like a Bosnia Herzegovina. But you know what I think the first thing that's going to happen is. Um, you're just going to have uh, uh, Palestinians say, okay, we're going to get as many people into the legisla- legisla- yeah, legislature legislation as possible. Like you're Sunni already starting to see that happening. Did you yeah. see the front page of the Metro today? Or the third page, I think. It was on page three or some shit. And some guy, uh, the, you know this, Bir- this Birmingham uh, Trojan horse thing that everyone was like, yeah. it happened. And then you had all these community leaders using like inverted commas with my fingers here come out and say in the Muslim community in Birmingham they say oh no this is nonsense right and it was a clear freaking infiltration of the school system right yeah. um, and this guy who sat who was like the counsellor or sorry the, the governor of this board of schools was like he, they did one of those like uh, uh, journalism sting operations where they've got the hidden camera yeah and the guy's just like yeah I mean women are white women are inferior uh, western white children are dumb 
blah 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 we need this we need like uh we need like the sharia we need all this stuff i'm like man there is a real danger where there is a sub set of the society that openly hates the society they live in mm. the, and, and I don't mean every single Muslim on the street by any fucking stretch no, of the imagination no, no, no. but if you're a Muslim we're talking about who, who do you go to in the same case as the priests we were talking about earlier the guys you go to the community leaders you know inverted commas with my fingers Hamza was they, a community yeah, leader yeah, in they're fucking, and, and, and we've let the wrong people become the mouthpieces for the Muslim community in this country well, we've let nutbags and religious fundamentalists mm-hmm. dictate mm-hmm. and in, in, in conjunction it's, it's with the war on terror they now feel as though we're the bad guys religious fundamentalists it's, fundament- same, it's, the same yeah. as in the, it's you know, scary BNP councillors yeah. and like wait until there's a critical mass of moving, people who, who get elected politicians you're going to have some subset some mini group within the parliament pushing for Islamic bullshit on the religious fundamentalist topic move back to the Middle East because what I find yeah. fucking hilarious and mystifying is the fact that at the moment with ISIS inc- like coincidentally ISIS has completely went out the news yeah. the fact that they're completely butt fucking the Iraqi army and the Kurds yeah. and other people who haven't been accepted or fucking acknowledged as being a nation or a state mm. or even a people that yeah. exist are the only ones that are actually putting up a conclusive fucking effort against yeah. ISIS and even better is that we're now getting the fucking Iranians mm. involved because they and what we're doing is exactly what we used to do, for example, in the French-Indian War. Mm. What we would do in the colonies back in the 1700s is we'd go, the French would go, oh, we'll get the Cherokee on our side, yeah. or the Huron on our yeah. side. That's what and we the used British, to do it, yeah. And the British would get, like, the fucking Mohawks on their side, etc., etc. Mm. And now what we're doing is we're going, well, we need to sort this shit storm mm. out because we don't understand it. It was the same yeah. then. We didn't understand it. Yeah. It was cultural. And this time it's religious and it's cultural. It's sectarian. Mm. within. It's religiously sectarian. Um, now what we're doing is like, well, we really fucking hate yeah. Iran. I'm, I'm, and I'm, we've, we've yeah. went out of I'm, our way for the past 10, 15 years to make Iran look like the worst people on earth. Yeah. But they're Shia mm. and they're the majority. Exactly. I'm, a, I'm 100% behind the Kurds, They're a majority the Kurds, Shia country, so now we need the Iranians on our side to stop the even bigger cycles, the Sunni fundamentalists yeah. in ISIS. Basically, ISIS is the... We're, ISIS are the people we're talking about where even Al-Qaeda are going... Mm. Holy well, the fuck, Sunnis, Sunnis are, are a minority in Iraq. I mean, I'm in yeah, full support. Yeah, in Iran, they're a majority. Yeah, I mean, and many that's Kurds. Why, that's why in the first Gulf War, many the people Kurds in the south Sunnis. of Iraq, the people in the south of Iraq, uh, in like places like Basra, etc., helped us against yeah. Saddam. And then we completely yeah, left the, them you, out You meant Iraq. to say the Shia are a yeah, minority Yeah, no, that's Iraq. what I'm saying. People yeah, yeah. in the south of Iraq Well, I mean, the Shia, Kurds, the Kurds are largely Sunni. They, Some they, of them are Shia. They associate the Kurds, more. Yeah. They associate more with... Iranian culture yeah. or the Farsi culture or Persian yeah. culture, culture but the, the difference between the Kurds and for example like ISIS is that the Kurds mm. are looking at it logically and they've had to over the past like I don't know thousand fucking years yeah. since the last person that actually was really a cultural leader in Kurdish culture was fucking Salahuddin yeah, mm-hmm. Saladin, right? yeah. that was the last real person uh-huh. if you think of figures within Kurdish culture mm. how many do you think of not many people when people think of Saladin they just think of a fucking Arab mm. but it wasn't he was a Kurd yeah. since then they've had no identity I'm they've pretty been, sure Omar they've Khayyam been, they've I'm been annihilated sure. by the Ottomans they've been annihilated by the Soviets yeah. they've been annihilated by the Iraqis fucking Saddam yeah. Hussein was gassing them by the thousands in the yeah. 80s and 90s yeah. and the yeah. 70s Operation Anfal which yeah. is a, a passage situation, from the, the Quran which just means to cleanse their situation and their you know? policies is that the idea or like the construction of a yeah. state fucking far supersedes yeah. he, you know, any he, religious you know, he killed about 17,000 people at the Halabja attack like basically and this is the amazing thing about the, the Iraq Turks war, kill, you know, the Turks fucking, have killed thousands of Kurds yeah. as well but at the same time it's like the flip side is the Kurds kidnapped fucking Turkish aid workers and yeah. skinned them alive like 20 years ago or something yeah. like that yeah. so it's like there's animal yeah, like, yeah. There's uh, atrocities it's the PPK I think that they call yeah. themselves in. but I mean the Kurds are, are mostly Sunni but they identify themselves more as a people and a nation mm. which is I mean uh, which is a positive manifestation of nationalism actually which doesn't often happen which but, funnily enough is like Pakistan yeah. Pakistan they see themselves as more of a region and a culture well no no but see Pakistan Pakistan uh, Pakistan exists because of religion. Yeah, Pakistan exists because it, of religion. It, it's but more it of a country a, now. It feels more like yeah, a country to the, the people that live there now. But, but it was formed as a Muslim country. It, yeah, it was a Muslim country. Yeah. But it and was millions a col- of it was Indians of moved across the country to exactly. live in the, in the Muslim part when the partition happened. I mean, East Pakistan, which is now Bangladesh, I mean, they broke away because Pakistan is so fucking inept. It's one of the most corrupt countries in the world. It's. I mean, it's We're hilarious. Sheltered Bin Laden. I'm just going to point out. Just going to point out. Michael has a black dot. 
yeah. on his hand oh. I think he's just been told he's going to be murdered exactly. by pirates shit the flying man the flying yeah, du- yeah, is that like the, the flying Dutchman kind like of like the squid guy yeah, have you never seen fuck? oh fuck have you never seen Treasure Island the 90s version with Christian Bale it's got the guy who da- the guy who played uh, I, know, I'm Bo- going I'm going from the Muppets Treasure Island right oh, okay. no 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 no. The, it's probably the best rendition mm. of the book ever like yeah. to fucking reach the screen uh, Christian Bale um, Oliver Reed um, Charlton Heston is fucking a uh, Long John oh, Silver. Oh, I hate Dr. Charlton Heston. Uh, really? I hate Charlton no, he's a dick, but he's a great actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Also, what was the name of the bald guy that was a hunter in fucking Jurassic Park 2? Oh, what, what the, like, like, uh, Peter Clever, Possil- Clever Fui, Girl. Peter Possilfway, that was it. Yeah, what, Clever Seriously, Girl. Yeah, yeah, watch it. Watch it, man. It was ins- yeah. It's an insanely good movie. Well, you, did you, you ever see the, the Sky there. remake gonna that had... Uh... Pirate is going to come... Blind Pew is going to come <laughs> tonight and did murder you, you. Did, you, um, did you ever see the Sky version of it that came out a couple of years ago with, oh, it, with, with Eddie, Eddie Izzard? Izzard. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but I It saw was the quite trailers. good. It was one of those Sky Uber HD really... I mean, they shoot some beautiful fucking... Say, they kidnapped. shoot some beautiful film, Have that you ever, company. Nobody watches, it. nobody watches anything that's on Sky. Have you ever read Game of Thrones? Yeah, but that's not produced by Sky. One of the few books that mentions Kerstorff in it mm. have you been to the White Lady they actually have an excerpt from the book in yeah, stone it's, um, where it's well, a treasure out of treasure yeah, no no no, no it's, it's, the, film it's kid, uh, the book Kidnapped yeah, yeah. Oh, right. has by Robert Louis through, Stevenson yeah. he has to travel through Kerstorff and to get to South Queens Ferry yeah and the only like, he has some like negative shit to say about it or something yeah I think it was yeah. like Kerstorff and his full of queer oh, okay. folk or something we, like that I can't remember we have about two minutes left before the battery on my laptop dies well, so right, well if you I guys want to keep we could keep going or or and I could plug it in you want to go for longer? We'll have a, we'll have a wrap up. Yeah, uh, I think we'll plug, it, plug it in and then we can just. Oh no, I have I have about I have about ten uh, maybe about five minutes until it actually shuts down automatically. So just All plug right. it in the now then. Why? Well, you might as well just to prevent it going tits up. No, it, it won't go. It won't go tits up necessarily. If we wrap it up in the next like two minutes. All right. Okay. All right, okay. okay. Let's wrap it up then. Wrap it. Wrap it. Wrap it up. Double wrap. Double wrap. Well, it. from from. We went from the, statutory rape to. Treasure 18th Island. century, 17th and 18th century yeah. uh, combat techniques. G- give us a, gen- a genre rundown of all the shit we've done. The fucking Israel Palestine. Basically, just the ramblings the Ukraine. of fucking maniacs yeah, yeah. at 20 <laughs> past 12 at night. Man. This is Charles Manson type shit. You know, like, I'm There's shit you... on the walls. I don't know where it's come from. <laughs> yeah, someone well, you've, has written. You've written you're writing written, your autobiography. Someone has written just the word rape and yeah. shit on the wall. <laughs> I don't know who it was. Yeah. But I think it was Michael. That's why. No, I was for these so long. things just happen, yeah. man. We have mice, but they're just they're growing way more violent and extremist in the way that. What they're, your mice? What they're super rats? Did you not see that on the front page of like the Star or something? It was no, like Britain's no, being infested by genetically modified super rats. Can I point, out, uh, can yeah. I point out that there's uh, like Steve Austin has a podcast called the Steve Austin Show, and he keeps making references to rats in his in his um, ranch that are on that he believes are on uh, performance enhancing drugs, <laughs> and so he keeps making up these crazy stories about going into his gym and seeing like rats bench pressing 400 pounds and stuff <laughs> yeah there was a spider that used to live in the corner of my conservatory and I lived up at Clermis and it was the biggest spider you've ever fucking seen in your life my dad's going at it with like a broom and I'm like he's gonna take that broom off you snap it in half and throw it back at him <laughs> like it's, it's ridiculous Spiders, I mean, spider it, versus the hoover on the, is on the, the issue of like um, animals here. Have you noticed? Uh, you got Twitter. You don't. You don't have Twitter, do you? Yeah, you do have. Twitter. Yeah, I do have Twitter. Yeah. See I, what I uh, find uh, on Twitter. At so Shadow, often. At Shadow Podcasts. Uh, you can find me See there. what I find so often on Twitter Tweet is me. posts from fucking teenage girls talking about snakes in Edinburgh with the emoji of a fucking snake, which is a reference to people who are apparently snakes. Shut the fuck up with that stuff. Wait, is an emoji that a, just a hashtag something? No, an emoji is like a little it's fucking a wee picture. Like oh, all right, yeah. So it's yeah. like a little picture. Or they mean it in like a social so context, like, so like many, she's a snake. So, it's like so many snakes them. in Edinburgh, hashtag can't deal with it. Stop with that <laughs> shit. <laughs> hashtag like story my life. No, like, I, mean, I like to do... I, I never hashtag anything. Uh, it, the, basically the only stuff that goes up on Twitter I never tweet directly on Twitter just whatever I put on Facebook will be relayed to Twitter uh, I go on like the Northern Ireland trends and then do hashtag <laughs> and <laughs> that's, that's a wrap that's, that's, getting, that's getting no you have should to we end it there Northern you Ireland's national bo- motto if they were a country and not a province uh, should be the demonstration t- soon turned violent like that should be their national motto that's like, also forget edited. forget yeah, that's, name no, on me and like well. no, I'm, I'm not editing that. that no show. please yeah, edit yeah, it yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. for the sake I'll of see you guys later on thank you very much for listening uh, and we're 
on with Darren Adam this Friday, which would be the 25th. Technically tomorrow, it's the 24th today because it's after midnight. I will see you later on. Bye. Bye. Mike, you're not going to say bye? God damn it, Mike. Good evening.